Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Um, this video isn't going to be about the gamma or digamma function as we are putting that series on hold for a bit. Uh, we're going to be looking at just an interesting problem, um, which actually I began thinking about around Christmas time because it's to do with Secret Santa or any kind of situation where you're drawing names out of a hat. So with a group of friends from my class, I was doing a Secret Santa and it got me thinking, what's the probability that if N people put their name in a hat, that nobody draws their own name back out. And I think the best way to think about this is actually in a combinatorics sense. Um, and so let's have a look at it. Let's say for ease, because I don't want to have to write out a huge number of letters, I'm going to say we're dealing with five people and then we'll extrapolate that out um, to N people. So I'm going to start with people who are creatively named A, B, C, D and E. And their names are going into a hat and they're coming out of the hat with a new order. So let's say person one puts their name in, the name that they draw out will then be in position one. And what we're really looking for is all of the arrangements of A, B, C, D and E such that no letter ends up in the position it originally was. So we can't have any A's here, we can't have any B's here, we can't have any C's here or D's here or E's here because that would imply that E drew E or D drew D and we are not allowing that. And this is actually called the derangements of A, B, C, D and E where N equals five in our case. And so that's where our probability is going to come from. So remembering that we can calculate the total number of permutations, which is all of the combinations, irrespective of um, AB really being the same of BA. In permutations, these are counted as different arrangements. And the way to calculate this is just by doing N factorial of all of the letters that we've got. So in our case, it would be five factorial, which I believe is 120. So there are 120 possible combinations of A, B, C, D and E. And we want to find out using some function n that we haven't derived yet, how many possible arrangements of A, B, C, D and E exist such that no letter ends up where it started. So let's see if we can work out what this function of n is. Well, I'll write it here. And actually for ease, we're going to think about what f of three is just because in drawing Venn diagrams, it gets much more complicated after three. And yeah, we're gonna use a Venn diagram to have a look at this issue. So I'm drawing here um, a box and this represents the set of all of the possible combinations. So in our case with five people, that was 120. With three people, that would be six. And inside my Venn diagram, I'm going to have three intersecting circles like so. Now circle one represents the possibility that when we put A, B and C into our hat, that we get an A back in the position A. Our second circle represents the possibility that when we put our B into the hat, we get a B back out in the second position. And similarly, our third one represents C getting mapped onto C. So all the possible combinations where no letter gets mapped onto itself is simply just this entire Venn diagram minus the space that's been taken up by these circles because in any one of these intersections we have at least one thing that is breaking our rule. So how can we approach this? Well we know that the total number of things in our set is n factorial and in our case since we're dealing with three I'm going to write that as three factorial. So now that we know there's three factorial in the total arrangements we need to think about subtracting this area that we don't want. And first, let's think about the case when B is mapped onto B, C is mapped onto C, or A is mapped onto A. So in each one of these cases, we're having one of the letters fixed, which means that we're choosing one letter from three total letters. And that informs us that we're going to be using the choose function. So we've got a coefficient of three choose one, because three choose one of A, B, C will give us A, B, and C. And this is all of the mappings that we don't want. We don't want A and A, we don't want B and B, and we don't want C and C. And that's the three cases that we're looking to avoid. And once we've fixed one letter in place, there's two letters that we can arrange as we like. And that's going to be three minus one 
factorial. Because we could have A, B, C, or we could have A, C, B, and both of those we would not want. Now the only issue with this is you might notice that actually we have subtracted too much. Because when we take away this circle here, like that, and this circle here, like that, and this circle here, like that, We've subtracted each of the intersections much too much. And we don't want that. We want to subtract everything only once. So we're going to have to add some things back into our sum. Now, all of the intersections are where two letters have been mapped onto the letters that, that they originally were. So that means we're not going to be using three choose one. We're going to be using three choose two because that will give us A, B, a, C, and B, C. And these are all of the possible combinations of two letters that could have been mapped onto themselves. And by that I mean anything in the form of A, B breaks our rule, anything in the form of A, something, C breaks our rule, and anything in the form of something, B, C breaks our rule. So we're going to be adding something back in with a coefficient of 3, 2 from Pascal's triangle. And then we only have one letter left that we have to arrange once we've fixed 2, so it's going to be multiplied by 3 minus 2 factorial. And there's one final thing that we need to consider, and that is the centre, the union of all three of our circles. Because if we add back in this, this and this, we've added our centre back in three times, and we originally subtracted it three times, which means that we haven't taken away our centre yet. So we've got to subtract... 3 choose 3. In other words, the all of the possible arrangements of A, B, C in three spaces that are unique, which will just give us A, B, C, because that is exactly the final combination that we want to subtract. So we end up with 3, 3 in the binomial uh, triangle, and there's no letters left that we need to rearrange at the end, so we end up with 3 minus 3 factorial, which is 0 factorial. So there we've worked our way through, using a Venn diagram, all of the possible combinations that work. And we've now ended up with this sum. And just, for, just to give you a bit of clarity, I'm going to rewrite this as 3, 0 times 3 factorial. And it becomes apparent now why we would do that, because uh, 3 factorial is all the total combinations. 3, 1 times 3 minus 1 factorial plus 3, 2 times 3 minus 2 factorial minus 3, 3 times 3 minus 3 factorial. And this should show you the pattern. This should, this should inform you about what's going on here. This is a sum from 0 to n of negative 1 to the n so that this negative one will give us our alternating positive and then negative and then positive and then negative. And we've also got an n minus k factorial, which we can see as we follow along in the sum. And then we've got an n k as binomial coefficient there. Now let's just see if we can simplify down this because we know that n k is equal to n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial and we're multiplying this by n minus k factorial, which means we have a nice cancellation there and we get left with just n factorial over k factorial. So that means the simplest and nicest way that we can write this sum is as negative one to the n times n factorial all over k factorial. And so this is our f of n. And it's actually called the subfactorial, and we denote it like so, with the exclamation mark before the n. Now, if you remember, the original intention here was to calculate the probability that for n people, nobody draws their own name out of the hat. So this is, for n people, how many ways there are such that nobody draws their own name from the hat. And we know that the total number of ways that people can draw names out of a hat is n factorial. So the probability that nobody draws their name out of the own hat is equal to n subfactorial divided by n factorial. And if we just look at our sum here, that's equal to the sum from
from k equals 0 to n of negative 1 to the n over k factorial. Now, this is something really interesting because you may recognize this series or at least think it looks familiar. Now, some of you may remember that e to the x has a Maclaurin series as the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the k divided by k factorial. And this looks remarkably similar to our sum here. All we need to do is put x as negative 1 and excluding the difference between n and infinity here, we have the same summation. And of course e to the negative 1 is just 1 over e. So what is this telling us? It means that as the number of people participating in your game increases and approaches infinity, the probability that none of them draw their own names approaches 1 over e, or e to the negative 1. And that's just due to this, uh, and of course that's just due to how similar the Maclaurin series of e to the negative 1 is to our expression here. And I thought this was a really lovely result. It's quite beautiful and you wouldn't expect it to show up. It's just nice how E somehow manages to show up everywhere. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's kind of different to the last few videos I've been making. So let me know what you thought. And if you have any suggestions, then please comment down below. Thanks a lot for watching. See you later.